Hello friends, uh, we have just seen the steps that we are going to do and this is the code um, that we will write uh, in order to implement the steps that we have just discussed in our previous video. Okay, the, the first thing that we do is uh, we are going to read the uh, libraries. Uh, so we are using NumPy, Pandas and the Matplotlib. Okay, the next step is to read the data in CSV format and the, we have just given the file name as gradientdescent.csv and I'm using the Anaconda Python distribution but you can use any uh, Python software for this one. Okay, okay. then what we are doing is uh, we have stored the data in, our, in a data frame and then we are using the head method which gives the first five records but then you know we only have five records in the first place right so this is just to check the data next what we are doing is uh, we are separating the variable and the target so for the variable we are assigning it to x the capital x and the target into small y okay once we do that what we are going to do next is standardize both x and y so for that we need the minimum and maximum value of x and similarly we would need the minimum and maximum value of y and then we are going to divide each values with the x minus x mean divided by the x max minus x mean that is the way to standardize and you can match that this is the exact values that we got when we were doing the theoretical uh, concept building right so we do both for x and y the standardized method once we have both x and y standardized then we are going to initialize the learning rate to be 0 0.01 typically in a industry project we put multiple values of eta it will be 0 0.01 then we'll pass actually a list okay 0 0.01 0 0.001 0 0.0001 and so on and as we have discussed we are going to run this process for 2000 times once we have defined these two parameters, then we are also going to initialize the slope m and b to be 0.45 and 0.75 respectively. Okay, that also we saw why we are doing it in the theoretical class. Then what my function should do is, I am creating three empty list the, to store the previous uh, sum of squared error, the previous m and the previous b. When we say previous, that means we start with a value of m and b and whatever SSE we get relevant to that, we are going to store it there okay once we have this three empty list now it becomes like a container where we can store our values and what values are we going to do is we are going to run a for loop for 2000 times and first we are going to calculate the predicted sale price which we can use by np dot product we are just doing a dot product between my uh, variable x and my slope m plus b this is nothing but the equation y is equal to mx plus c y being the predicted sale price once we know the predicted sale price, we are calculating the error is equal to predicted sale price minus y, the original value. Okay. Then we are doing the sum of squared error is nothing but the dot product between um, or basically the square of the error. Okay. So you can do it either way, whatever way you prefer to do it. Okay. Then we are uh, appending the sum of squared error, whatever we've got in the empty list that we have previously defined. Similarly, we are going to repeat that for storing the m value and the b value. Once we have these three parameters, we can then calculate our gradient, right? And then based on those gradient, by multiplied by eta, we can define our new m and b, okay? And once this 2000 times it has run, what we can do is we can return the list of uh, m, b, and the SSE that you can see here. We said return past m, past b, and past SSE. Once we have this, uh, then what we are going to do is we are going to utilize this function on our actual data set so we are just passing our parameters x which is the variable y which is the output or the target then we have the m which is the initial value 0.45 b which is the initial value of 0.75 the number of time it is going to run which is 2000 and the learning rate these are all the parameters that we have to provide okay in this uh, function you can also see that learning rate is not derived from the data rather it is something we have provided and that is why sometimes it is also called as hyperparameter that means it is not learning from the actual data rather it is something which we externally provide so this is a difference between hyperparameter and parameter in case of machine learning okay now in order to visualize uh, these three things m b and how you know SSE changes with m and b what we are doing is we are just storing all these three lists into a data frame but 
and we have given the name as visual underscore df this is just to make our life bit more easy so that you know we can uh, plot it uh, properly and so that our code of plotting this 3d graphs remains simple uh, so that is you can see m b and uh, sse in the line number 199 okay so if you notice here remember yesterday when we are doing our theoretical calculation we started with 0.45 as m 0.75 as b and we got something as 1.835 okay here also we got the same thing then we reduced our m by certain value and if you remember it was 0.4246 and then it was 0.6964 something so they rounded it off to 0.6965 and we got an error rate of 1.506 that means it got reduced you know by a certain value and uh, because theoretically we could only do one or two or three times but my program can run for 2000 times even and quickly also so that is why you know you can see all these new values of m b and sse the first two are th something which we did you know with hand all right now once we have these values m b and don't worry about this matplotlib code at this point of time because eventually we are going to cover all these things in our future projects but right now just uh, simply see that we are just importing the matplotlib pyplot and the access 3d library just to plot a scatter plot here and if you can see here you know uh, my gradient descent gradually decreased and decreased and finally there was a point when it just went to almost to zero and for that particular location we are interested to find out what was the combination of m and b right which we can simply do by using the dot idx mean function that way i will get the location of the sse right and for that location we can get my m b and uh, you know uh, my other values so based on that what we can do is uh, you can utilize that to calculate uh, our future values right so now that I have, I have my m and b so that means i can write a new straight line y is equal to mx plus b and what it will give me is a new prediction sale price but keep this in mind this prediction sale price is a standardized value so we have to convert it back to the original scale so what we do is whatever prediction sale price we got with standardized remember we divided it by something as 300,000 minus 175,000 right which was the max minus mean of the sale price so we are going to multiply back with that difference plus we are going to add the 17500 okay so this will give us back the original price so we can say that our 1400 square feet house is going to cost us about $223,000 and that is the main intention behind machine learning that you find the parameters from the data okay okay so now that we see that uh, we have a final price you know which is about roughly about quarter million dollar so it creates a, a bit challenging situation for a data scientist or a machine learning engineer to explain this to our you know business leads and people who are going to eventually take a decision that is this my final conclusion am i how sure am i that my price is going to be around this much for the 1400 square feet house and that often comes as a challenge the reason being first of all if you see we have just taken a limited data set a very small data set of five records plus we are just considering only one variable which is the area but the real world is not that simple right so we should have taken into consideration about how far is that house from the city how far is that house uh, from the school or the nearest hospital because those things also do influence your uh, price of the house if it is at the heart of the city then it the same size of the house will cost you more and the, it will cost way less if you are in a village for that square feet house right so we have not considered those things into picture right now uh, this reason being because we wanted to start everything step by step and we are gradually adding the complexity so so far you just have seen a quick idea that what actually a machine learning does and how we do it this single variable analysis gives us the entire picture but then life is not that simple so we will go ahead and you know add more variables more factors so that we can be more close to the real world model right so thanks for watching and stay tuned for our multivariate calculus class